Welcome to the channel. This is going to be a pretty quick reaction video to a conversation that's coming up again in the hobby about card cleaning. If you've been following along with kind of YouTube content, there was a, a rookie one of one black prism of Victor Wembanyama that was pulled recently by NorCal Sports Cards. And they made a YouTube video, you know, showing their process of walking into PSA to take their card in there. And then at the end of the video, they shouted out uh, Kurt's Card Care, you know, talking about how they had used Kurt's Card Care to, you know, freshen up their card before submitting it to grading. It was literally, they were saying this in the PSA building with like PSA graders standing behind them. Uh, and it kind of sparked off this conversation that comes up a bunch. Uh, and then and then there was a video on Neo's channel, Neo's Sports Cards. I'm sure if you know this channel, you know that one that kind of responded to this. And I really liked his video. So I, I wanted to, there was a few other thoughts I had in addition to what Neo was saying. And I do suggest you watch his video, but there's just a few other thoughts I had related to this. So in, in Neo's video, you know, he mentioned that he's done a few of these polls and that generally and for his audience, which is a pretty large audience, people of course are very opposed to the idea of trimming cards or, you know, altering them in that way, coloration, things like this, adding in color if there's a missing little piece of color or things like this. But as far as like wiping down the surface, maybe even using a kind of spray that kind of cleans it a bit, that generally the consensus by a majority of people, maybe something like three quarters of the people who responded to the poll was that that's not as big a deal. In the video, he went into some other things and he, he expressed a lot of a lot of things that I think are really important to, to, to talk about. One is, you know, he, he talked about how in other spaces, there's different expectations and different standards. You know, he was talking about in the comic book realm, for example, the idea of binding and pressing your comics before you send them in to get graded is just the normal practice at this point. It wasn't always necessarily that way, but when it was realized that you couldn't really catch it, it just became the normal practice. And maybe that's what's happening with card cleaning a little bit too. It's not something you can catch so it's becoming gradually a normal practice. Now, my question is whether it matters. You know, on, on one hand, in some ways, the biggest overarching thought I have is it actually doesn't matter. If you can't catch it, if you can't track it, then there's nothing you can do about it. So having an opinion on it matters not. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all because there's nothing you can do to, to kind of catch it. But on the other side, you know, I wouldn't necessarily want to do this myself. And it's not necessarily from a big moral standard that I would make that decision. Because, you know, I feel like there's cultural practices in the sports card world that are based on what came before that aren't necessarily rooted in anything too meaningful. You know, the fact that you you can use a micro a microfiber cloth and that's kind of generally accepted as okay, but if you use a little spray, it's not, that's not like rooted in anything pretty deep. It's just kind of a preference. And in other spaces in, in restoring art, it's a different standard. Comic books, it's a different standard. Even in trading cards related to like a Pokemon or Magic the Gathering, there's different standards. So each of these spaces have their own different standards. Each of these spaces have their own different kind of path. This is just where we're at in the realm of generally sports card trading cards. And if it changes, then it changes. And that's just something that's happened. Um, I, I feel like there's one of the things I was thinking about as I was watching Neo's video is how you don't know what the chemical reaction of something is going to do to a card long term. The thing that popped into my mind was those old finest cards, you know, like a Kobe Rookie, for example, which has the hulking effect, you know, the greening that could happen. When those cards were first released, they didn't realize that the chemical reaction over time was going to cause this greening effect to happen, but it happened. And it was not a short term thing. It was, it took a while. It took years before the chemical reaction took place. I feel like with things like Kurt's Card Care, other, I'm sure there's other things. That's just the one that seems to be, you know, more famous. I don't know what the chemical reaction will do. And I don't want to risk it with an expensive card like that because I don't know what that could mean on down the road. Because there is a lot of chemicals in that chromium finish that's on like prism cards and a lot of non-paper cards. There's a lot of chemicals in that. And in something like Kurt's Card Care or uh, these other sprays, there's also a lot of chemicals in that. And I don't know how much long-term experimentation has there been on what's gonna happen when those different chemicals react with each other. It could end up being that something like a greening effect happens and we don't know about it for five or 10 years down the road. So the idea for if I pulled a one of one, you know, Wemby that could be worth six figures or more, I would not risk that. That is just, uh, that is a terrible idea to risk that. That being said, if somebody else did it, I would have nothing to say about it. I have no recourse. There's nothing I can do. There's no way I can know about it. So why even think about it? You know, I'm not gonna do it for myself. I'm gonna probably 
suggest that other people don't do it for themselves, at least until, you know, if, if it got to the point in the future, 10, 15 years down the future, we see that there's no chemical reaction and collectively the hobby made a decision that this was something and that, you know, that that was just going to be the standard practice. I'd just shrug my shoulders and be like, whatever, okay, let's, I, I probably still wouldn't do it myself, but this is just going to be, I'm going to expect to buy cards that are like that. Even right now, I expect that some of the cards I've bought are like that, and I don't know about it. There's nothing I can do about it, so I'm not even going to worry about it. You know, I think sometimes in these types of conversations, people just want to wield their opinion like a, a weapon, throw their opinions around, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> opinions are overrated in this culture. There are certain spaces where it's nice. It's an interesting conversation to share. But at the same point, it, it doesn't matter. There's nothing we can do about it. So there's no need to, to dwell on it. It's just, it's just a conversation to have and move on from. But it does get me thinking about like, what are the expected standards in, in various things? And how do we determine you know, what is acceptable and not acceptable in, in different spaces. In general, in the sports card world, it's, it's a bit of a, of a wild, wild west. And and that's just going to be, it's just going to be a reflection of where we're at at the time. You know, if the hobby, like right now, even, even the way the manufacturers decide to do things is a reflection of what the demand is from the customer, essentially. I mean, the reason that they have gone through the process of creating what I think is an oversupply of parallels, for example, is because the customers have shown that they value this. Even though me and other YouTube creators and other people on the street might talk about their frustration with it, they're still buying it. They're still putting higher value on certain low numbered parallels. Even though an opinion may say this or that, the, the opinion doesn't matter. It's more like, what is the actual, like, in business, in practice? Are we still buying the card? Are we still valuing certain cards higher? And if we are, then when we wield opinions, but we're not backing it up with actions, then why are we even wielding that opinion? I feel like so often people feel like the words and the words alone are the things that, that matter. But, you know, if, if we really say something, we have to back it up with our action. I feel like that's just in general, not just in sports cards, but in the world at large. People like to complain about different things that happen, but then the action, the way that they respond to it doesn't change and it just continues. And so there's no reason for anything to change. I don't know, in, in relation to card cleaning, I think that just means if you don't think it's a good thing, don't do it. I think it's just going to be one of those things. We're just going to have to settle ourselves into recognizing that this is a reality. It's just there. And until technology changes, it will always be there. Now, because of that, because of the fact technology could change, because of the fact that chemical reactions could have a long-term effect on down the road, I'm not going to do it myself. So anyway, that's just some of my random on the fly, off the top of my head topics. Part of the reason I wanted to make this video is I'm trying to get better at, <laughs> at the YouTube algorithm. I know there's going to be a topic of conversation that's going to come up right now in a lot of spaces. So I wanted to add my voice in here instead of normally what I'll do is I'll reflect on a topic that comes up and then maybe a month or two months later I make a video about it. But that by that point, nobody's thinking about it anymore. Nobody watches my video and I didn't contribute to the conversation in any way. And that video just, you know, plummets and doesn't do very well. So I figure if I can make this video now, put it out there, be part of the conversation a little bit and maybe get some more viewers. So I'm trying to learn this YouTube algorithm thing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, I hope you have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.